important to consider what unites all of us as um, as beings on this planet or in this cosmos. What is what is the fundamental aspect of being human or being agency, and that is open intelligence. It's not a collection of data streams. It's not a collection of points of view. It's not dependent upon any frames of reference, any conceptual frames of reference, any, any ideas or belief systems. Because everybody can have their own take on the meaning of what it means to be human, or the meaning of reality, or what is the nature of mind, what is the nature of intelligence, what is the nature of reality. So we could have all kinds of descriptive frameworks, and conventionally we've been using our mind um, referencing all of these concepts. Um, second-hand knowledge, what, what has been presented to us, and then building an identity based on thoughts, emotions, and sensations, and only putting all of the emphasis on the thoughts, the emotions, and sensations. And it can, yeah, I mean, look in your own experience, that's complicated, trying to figure out who we all are and how we can be harmonious together based on ever-changing descriptions is a lot of work. I mean, if you're lucky enough to stumble across a, a training like this, it's probably because, well, you could either be searching for the nature of mind or else a friend who has been involved in the training has introduced to you to the training and you've seen a shift in them. So it's, it's great good fortune to, to be introduced to the actual nature of our mind, of intelligence. And we can easily do that in this training by just stop, stop thinking for a moment, stopping thinking for a moment. When we stop thinking for a moment, we are directly introduced to the nature of mind. Without any frames of reference. So just consider now letting all your concepts and ideas just be as, as they are. Just leave them at the door for a minute. And ask yourself, what remains when I stop thinking? It's alertness, it's clarity, it's the power to know. It's quite simple. Now, if somebody had told me that when I started my search for the nature of mind, it would have made things a lot easier. Instead, it was complicated with conceptual frameworks like stillness, the now, nothingness, some kind of blissful state. So I was always referencing every moment with my practice. Am I feeling blissful? Am I feeling stillness? Am I in the now? Or am I just lost in my descriptions? And even stillness, the now, bliss, those are all just descriptions. They're all frames of reference, conceptual frameworks. So in this training, we hear the phrase short moments of open intelligence repeated many times. Open intelligence becomes more obvious. It goes continuous. Where open intelligence starts to outshine all of the frames of reference and the assumptions and the belief system. It just becomes more and more obvious that the nature of mind is all, always already present. We don't have to do anything for the nature of reality to be, be present and for us to actually experience it. So in this training we're using words and language and sharing our direct experience to paint the picture of open intelligence. It's important that we directly experience it. So the direct introduction to open intelligence. When you stop thinking for a moment, and you introduce yourself again and again, that's very powerful. We're acknowledging open intelligence as it is. In that shortest of moment, there, there is no frame of reference happening. There's just this open intelligence. And that just becomes more and more obvious through these short moments. Now, the short moments practice is not to <laughs> always stop thinking. Because when you stop thinking, the thoughts immediately, they just come back in. You know, what was I doing when I was stopping thinking? What does all this mean? There's so much contradictions and so on and so forth. Whatever way is comfortable for you or easy for you to remind yourself to acknowledge what's looking and keeping it so simple. So whether you like to take short moments of stopping all descriptions, like leaving your baggage at the door, 
you know, all of your belief systems, assumptions. Just give that gift to yourself, like say today. And I'm just going to prove to myself that open intelligence is present regardless of whatever information I've come here with. So for me, short moments of not describing all of the points of view or the data streams, it's, it's very powerful. And it, in that, there's immediate benefit. There's immediate relief in not needing to describe everything obsessively or even moderately. And just check that out. Like when you stop describing everything, there is something about you that's okay. If you know or you don't know what I'm talking about, it's still okay. Even if it the slightest of senses, or maybe if it's growing day by day, you feel more and more okay. So this open intelligence that's available when you're thinking, it's also the basis of thinking. Short moments of resting naturally, or resting your body and mind completely, without needing to do anything necessarily. Um, resting without striving. Can you all recall a moment where you weren't striving for anything? It could be when you lay your head down on the pillow to take a nap. You're not striving, you're just resting naturally. Or you're just sitting um, in nature and you're just kind of watching what's going on. You're resting naturally. Or you're... it could be when you're really busy. It, it doesn't require, open intelligence doesn't require you to be in any special circumstance or state. It doesn't require, well that's what I love about this training, is that I don't need to place myself in a quiet, peaceful environment to recognize the nature of reality and to get, to, to become accustomed to it, to become familiar, for assurance to grow in open intelligence. It's actually very powerful to see that we can gain confidence in the nature of reality in day-to-day -day life. Everything I'd been trying before pointed to that I need to remove myself from all situations in order to gain familiarity and assurance in who I really am. And so then that excluded all the time that I was not in retreat. You know, it, it didn't allow me to start to feel comfortable, okay, powerful, beneficial when I was in challenging situations, work, relationships, feeling angry, um, feeling unhealthy or feeling some physical sensations. You know, I always thought that, okay, I need to remove myself and be free of all of these in order to know the nature of reality of mind, this expanse of all-pervasive beneficial potency. And in this training, we see that it, that's not really required. We offer the, the practice of short moments of open intelligence, repeated many times, and we can all test that out. Again, it's not going to look like anything in particular. It doesn't mean you need to sit in a certain way. You don't need to breathe in a certain way. Whatever, what's looking through your eyes doesn't care if you have the best posture or the worst posture. It doesn't care what you had for breakfast. It doesn't care what kind of clothes you have on or not. It doesn't care what people are surrounding you or what the weather's doing. It simply is as it is. So short moments repeated many times. We're acknowledging our fundamental identity. It's that simple. Just because it wasn't pointed out, confirmed in our realities growing up, doesn't mean it's not the way it is. You can all remember when you were very young and before we had all of this training and schooling and belief systems, assumptions, you know, you can remember a time when it was just effortless. And you knew there was just something very expansive about yourself. And it was exciting. It had a sense of wonder and there was something easy about it, and it was, it was a freedom in that. And then we've taken on all of this training and identity, with it, our gender, our nationality, our religious and spiritual belief systems, medicine, psychology. So we've built up a lot of complicated systems. For what reason? 
to try to get along on this planet and not destroy ourselves. <laughs> but if you turn on any of the news channels and you look on the internet, has it worked? Has it worked in your experience where you feel comfortable with all of the data that you experience on a daily basis? Are we making an identity of ourselves based on our points of view about ourselves and others? And we have to say, yes, I've been doing that for my entire life. Except when I was a toddler and I didn't have all those frames of references. You know, it took a long time to build up this identity, whether you're a man, a woman, or neither, or if you're a musician, or an engineer, or a doctor, or you say you're from this religion or that religion, we've, it, it's taken a long time to build up this identity of who we think we are, and has that given us complete life satisfaction, a sense of flourishing, harmonious relationships, ease and empowerment in all situations. So, it's good to see that that doesn't provide this ultimate, ultimate fulfillment. Knowing open intelligence is our stainless, flawless identity is what we want. And we have access to that in each short moment. With the short moments, they begin to grow longer naturally. It's not contrived moments of open intelligence where you need to sit and somehow let all of your belief systems about yourself, you know, try to change them into something else. No extremes required. So the short moments, they're an, an amazing practice, and I would just really recommend testing that out. Like, whenever you find yourself in any situation, you can, uh, you can check, it at, check out, are you indulging, avoiding, or replacing, or starting to test out, letting the data be as it is, and seeing what opens up from there. Whether you, you'll start to have more clarity, insight, and discernment, rather than going into extremes and saying, well, you know, nothing's really needed because it's all open intelligence. Extreme states are also, they're just naturally subsiding when we rely on open intelligence. Like you can, you know, there might be ideas of nothing's needed, but you just see very practically how you naturally want to take care of yourself if you are feeling physical pain. All data are included and contained in open intelligence. Nothing is excluded from, from open intelligence. So physical pain or injury, of course we'd want to look after ourselves. We'd want to find a specialist in that area. If we had thrown our back out of alignment and we realize we have some work to do, we're not just going to lay around and hope that it pops back in place, probably. Maybe some of you can do that. It might take a month or something. <laughs> or you could just go see a chiropractor and, oh, okay. What will be of most benefit in each given time, place, and circumstance is the practical way of using open intelligence. It doesn't go into extremes of saying nothing matters or it's all oneness. And it just doesn't work that way. When you start relying on open intelligence, you see what it is in your direct experience. And it's fine if we have belief systems around spirituality, different practices, if it's shamanic or whatever it is, but just test out short moments with whatever you're engaged in. Rather than basing healing on the concepts and the frames of reference, just take a short moment and let all of those ideas naturally be as they are. There will be a tendency to try to figure it out in the beginning and maybe years into the practice. That's just how we've been operating for most of us. So. You don't need to try to change it now and say, well, none of this has any relevance or does it have relevance. You just continue on and check out in your own experience what is providing you the greatest benefit. Do you want to involve yourself in more descriptions based on an identity that you can't even find? Can you find an identity called your name when you really look? 
When you go about your day, are you always looking at your body going, I am this person, I am this person, I am this person? No, I mean it pops into your mind and then it goes. Data are arising and self-releasing. One moment you're hungry, then you're sad, then you're jealous, then you're happy, then you're confused, then you're clear. <laughs> Unpredictable, countless and ceaseless. If we try to base our stability on ever-changing descriptions, that just leads to more confusion. Maybe some moments of clarity and then moments of confusion, constantly oscillating back and forth. What we really want is the complete mental and emotional stability that is available in these short moments. It doesn't matter which data streams you're experiencing, you can always gain further assurance in your powerful, stable nature. It's really important to see that in our experience. So then you ask yourself, well, what do I do when I feel sad? What should I do with it? If you indulge in it, then you can create a whole story around why you're sad, and then you start thinking of all the past relationships that have gone wrong, and all the things that you may feel regret about, and then sadness for the world, and we could be sunk. We could be in bed for days crying because the sadness is overwhelming, and or we can take short moments and allow sadness to be as it is. It arises, it may seem to hang around for a bit, and it self-releases. So what I've seen practically is when I'm not indulging in those descriptions, they more and more quickly they self-release. But it has required a commitment on my part to stop indulging, avoiding, or replacing in short moments many times. And the community, the trainer, and the training of Balance who will support us in gaining assurance in allowing data to be as it is. We've had a lot of training and trainers and community and a practice in not letting things be as they are. So why not flip the switch to always on benefit? And the community are a, you know, a powerful everyday example of what it means to live from open intelligence rather than indulging descriptions or avoiding descriptions or replacing them. We can borrow the trust from others if we need to. Because initially for me it was such a new practice that I was like, well, how is this going to change everything that I want to change about myself? Can I actually feel comfortable with not trying to change everything about myself? not trying to change my negativity or my sadness or my feeling shameful. Like, what will happen if I let it be as it is? Does that mean I'll actually feel more shameful, sadder? Will I feel more of this or that? Will I lose my creativity? Will I just become a zombie? But I could see in those around me that that wasn't what was happening for them. If anything, they were more enlivened. They felt more comfortable. They were more confident. Um, more loving, more available, having more access to skillful, practical solutions. 